in this video I'm going to be covering how to make a heartbeat system so your master server when there's an invalid you know server listing in the database it'll go through find it and remove it from the entry so that way other clients that are you know searching for servers in their server browser they won't see that because it's been removed so in the previous video I kind of gave a uh, brief touch on sockets I didn't really go into actually how to make it and I'm not going to do that and well I showed how to make it but I'm not actually writing the code I already have the code written I just want to kind of show you and walk you through it because this is going to be kind of dependent on your master server setup but this one's going to be specific to mine which is the one that we created in the Nazi zombie tutorial series just slightly different because this is a, a separate project now so to begin what a heartbeat is let's say I create a server entry I hit host game it's not going to work for me because my web page or my web API that's posted to Azure is currently down and I don't know why it just won't decide to work but I hit host game and it's going to create an entry right here in my database once that entry is in that database there we go it finally kicked me out we go to find game you know refresh list that entry will appear here in the server list for other clients so other clients can join me well that's great but the problem is let's say I uh, when I'm in my lobby and I hit back to close the lobby I don't want to be the host anymore I just want to do whatever well that'll work because I have it set up to delete that server entry whenever we hit back to leave the lobby well let's say we're the host and we're in the lobby and then our game crashes or our internet drops or just something like that occurs well that's where you have an issue because you're not actually triggering anything to destroy your server entry inside the database instead that entry is going to stay there even though your game is no longer open so other clients they'll see your server list or your server entry that's not actually there in their server browser and as you can assume that's a problem because it doesn't exist they have nothing to connect to it's just wasting space in the server browser so that's why you create what's called a heartbeat so a heartbeat works just like a heartbeat periodically it will scan through all the entries in the server or in the database and try to make a connection to them if it cannot make a connection to them that we assume that that server is dead or the user doesn't have the ports forwarded that they need to for the game and that kind of stuff so we remove that server from the database if it makes a successful connection we skip it move on to the next one and continually check until we're th through all the servers in the list and once then after all we go through all the servers we wait another x seconds like let's say a minute for example and we continue so how do we actually go through and implement this let's start with our game so in the previous video I stepped through this so what we're doing is we're creating an endpoint and an endpoint pretty much all it is is literally the IP address which in my case this is my local one and then the port that we're trying to use so I'm trying to use 7787 which is the same port that is used for beacons in uh, Unreal Engine by default anyways so once we defined our endpoint we go ahead and create a listen socket it just literally of type F socket set it as reusable because we made next I don't know why I can't think of a reason why I would actually have to reuse this because it's getting destroyed after closing so I could probably remove that anyways then all we do is we take our listen socket and we bind it to create internet address using our endpoint information and our port so that pretty much think of it like it's opening a TCP socket on a specific port that we want so as long as that port's open in your router assuming you're behind a router you other people from wherever should be able to connect to your machine through that port using TCP so then after we do that all we do is simply call listen and I just set it to 30 so that means I can get 30 heartbeats out of this before it pretty much will reject any more connections and 30 should be all you need because I have it like once every minute or every like yeah minute every 60 seconds I refresh and go through the list so the server would have to be sitting there in idle at the lobby for 30 minutes 
if it goes past 30 minutes, which I might reduce that, then that server is removed from the database. So that way you can't just have servers that are sitting there doing nothing. So we, this is literally all the code that you need to uh, get this up and going on your game. So if we head over to the program that actually handles the uh, checking, we can get into more interesting stuff. So to sum it up, what we're doing is we're performing a GET request. And what this GET request is doing, it's making a call to our web API, just like our, um, our host controller. Where... Yeah, our GET request, it's literally just getting all the servers from our database, just like I created in the tutorial series. And it's storing them inside of our response. So here's our response stream. Then what we do is we convert it to a stream reader. So that way it's just simple to go ahead and convert it to a string. And the format that we're working in is JSON. So as you can tell by just the way I named it. So once we get our response, convert it to a stream reader, and store it in a string, we're left with a nice clean JSON string. So I have an example of that here. This is the format that it uh, outputs as. And that works for me. So then once we have that, what we want to use is I just go ahead and use JSON convert to deserialize, well, the string into actual classes. So I'm using my server data class, which is the same one that's on the uh, web API that just contains the ID, IP address, server name, map name, current players, and max players. Same thing. Then I'm putting that into a list because I have, and it's not just going to be one server, it's going to be an array of servers. So I have one server entry here and the second server entry here. So we have two or however many you would end up needing. So that's why we're putting them inside of a list. So since we have them in a list, what we can do is we can actually loop through it. So I just do a for each loop on our list of server data objects. And what I do is I just simply check if it's valid. So my validate server function, all it does is take in the uh, server data, which it could just take in the IP address and that would be fine. But inside of validate server, this is where we actually do the check. So we create a TCP client. We create our endpoint, which is just the IP address and the port we're connecting to. Remember the port's the same one as the beacon, so 7787. 7787 in our game. Then all I'm doing is trying to connect. And with the TCP client, if it connects, it is assuming, well, you're wrapping a try catch block, but if all this is successful, you will establish a proper handshake. And if that ends up being the case, we'll go ahead and just close down our TCP client. It disposes of it and we return true. If this fails, then we simply will return false. So back down in that check, if this is successful, we don't need to do anything. I need to honestly reverse these because it's more likely to be valid than invalid. I mean, uh, never mind. ignore that comment. Anyways, so it validates server data, meaning it's the server's valid. I just printed out some console command or logs to the console. And otherwise, if the server is invalid, meaning it did not establish a proper connection slash handshake, what we do is we want to create a delete request. So I just have another HTTP web request. I just called it delete request, doing it in the format of JSON. And the type that we're doing is delete, not post, not put. We're just deleting because we want to access our web API and perform the delete. So then we just need to store some information because in my delete request, I have it taking in our server data again. And our server data obviously is data. So what I'm doing is I'm pretty much converting our data object here into a string. So as you can see here, JSON convert, serialize. And then we take that string, pretty much our data object, and we pass it in to our delete request. Then once all that's set up and good to go, I should really wrap this in a try catch, we perform the delete. So 
we use our delete request and we get the response. And get response is essentially just performing the request. So like a get request, it would perform a get request. If it was a put or a post, it would perform those and so on. So we just push or do a get response. And that will remove it from the database because that's how I have my this. It calls delete data. And the only thing I'm doing is passing in the IP address. So delete data, here's the one that takes in the IP. All we're doing is performing an SQL pretty much procedure that, while firing an SQL procedure that we've already made inside the database called delete server entry. And we're just passing in the IP address because that's the only thing we need. That's what I'm going by. So if that IP address list, well, is anywhere in the database, it will go through and remove each and every entry. As you can tell by here, delete server entry. We just literally we delete from the server data table where IP address is equal to the passed in IP address. And that's it. It goes through and clears all of them out. So if there's duplicates, it'll get rid of them. Just like how I have my create server set up before the creates server actually gets, well, it creates the server in the database. It goes through and checks and sees if there's any uh, entries in the database with the IP address that is trying to create the server. So that way it, it, it avoids doing duplicates. So then that's literally it. Then you just, uh, the only thing I'm doing is setting this all as a sleep because I don't want it to continually run. So I have it set to 30 seconds right now. But how you would actually go about deploying all of this. So right now I'm using Azure. And previously I was using, uh, well, I still aim for the database right now, Gearhost. So both of those support web jobs. So what web jobs are is pretty much this application right here. So I could deploy this entire C Sharp application as a web job and have it be running on, you know, my Gearhost server or my Azure server for Microsoft. And that would continually run and do all of this stuff so it would constantly loop through every 30 seconds and check and see okay is the server valid if it is good so let's go to the next one if it's not valid meaning we can't connect to it let's delete it from the database it doesn't belong in the server list anymore so that's how you would kind of set this up so you deploy it alongside your web api in my case my war to war master server so i'm trying to I think that's about as best as I can really explain it. And the only thing that you really want to make sure of is that it's continually running. So that's why I have everything in a while loop. And I can actually remove checks. I don't have a for that anymore. But yeah, so this program will be pretty much once it's fired up on the web server, or like, like I said, Gearhost or Azure, it will continually be running and constantly being checking until you decide to kill this web job. So once you kill this web job, everything should still work as normal. You just won't have the heartbeat. And you can use that if you're using like free tier stuff like I am right now. And you can just fire it up kind of randomly whenever you're actually doing testing. So I hope this was a good explanation. It was about the best one that I could think of to give, but I mean, this kind of covers the very basics, in my opinion, of creating a simple heartbeat. And this is about as simple as I could really make it, but I have tested it and it is functional and I would like to show it, which is what I plan on doing initially, but currently for whatever reason, the web API server that I have posted on uh, Azure is just not functional period. It just randomly went down but it still shows that it's active, but I cannot connect to it at all. Yeah, makes sense. So anyways, if you have any questions on what all I've done here, or maybe you want to try to make your own and you're a little bit confused, you can find a link to my Discord server down below. Feel free to join it and ask whatever questions you have. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below as well. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Take care.